So I just finished Peacemaker Season 1, and it was so f***ing good. Granted, I could do without the shameless product placement of Flaming Hot Cheetos and Rock and Roll Ford commercials, but other than that, the show slaps. So I'm gonna quickly talk about it and give my analysis of Peacemaker Season 1. Oh, and speaking of spoilers, there's gonna be spoilers. And spoilers for Shazam. You'll see why. Something I love about Vigilante's character is how in the comics he had the ability to quickly heal from any of his wounds and injuries. Kind of like the same regeneration ability Wolverine has. Except if comic book Vigilante's wounds are too severe, he will definitely die. But in Peacemaker, it appears V is just a normal guy. However, he also appears to be healed every time he wakes up from a nap. Like after he crashes the product placement Ford vehicle, he falls asleep and is suddenly fully operational again. Even after taking a grenade to the entire body, the same thing happens after his quick stay in the hospital in episode 8. So even if it's not canon, in the show that he has the regeneration ability and is just some normal guy, James Gunn still kind of treats Vigilante like he does have this ability still. So in Suicide Squad, the good one, Chris claims that he will kill any man, woman, or child to obtain peace. He had this philosophy throughout his life and definitely had this philosophy while blindly following orders from Amanda Waller. Hence why he killed Rick Flagg because he couldn't go against his orders and let information contained on the hard drive get out about Project Starfish. Peacemaker thoughtlessly follows orders because he's supposedly protecting our freedom and using other vague excuses to justify the murder of those who don't necessarily have to die. Which is why people like Amanda Waller can get Chris to play the role of a villain while he still thinks he's a superhero. In Suicide Squad, Chris pointlessly kills Flag to make sure the Project Starfish files don't get out. And as Amelia states, Funny for you how often the only choice in killing people coincides. Which is why Peacemaker's name and everything he stands for is a joke to people like Rick Flagg. When he was a kid, Chris was forced to fight his own brother. Oh, and before I continue, I just have to say, I was dying when I realized Robert Patrick, who plays Chris's dad in Peacemaker, also played Johnny Cash's dad, Ray Cash, in Walk the Line. In Walk the Line, Ray Cash blames Johnny Cash for the death of his brother and has the whole the wrong son died mindset throughout the entire film. So the casting in Peacemaker Peacemaker was just phenomenal. Anyway, Augie forced Chris to fight his brother. But during their fight, Chris accidentally delivered a fatal blow, which resulted in something fatal. It resulted in his brother dying. After his brother's death, Chris prayed and begged God that he would do whatever God wanted him to do, as long as he could obtain peace. Since that day, Peacemaker swore that he would only kill in the name of peace. I thought it was poetic how after finding out Chris got shot, his dad responds, You let somebody shoot you? So I invite him to come shoot me, Dad. Pathetic. But then in episode 7, Chris takes out his dad in that exact way, by shooting him. We learn that the butterflies destroyed their home planet, and are now taking over humans and imposing their will on all of humanity, trying to stop us from destroying another habitable planet, possibly explaining why Judo Master teamed up with them, as Judo Master was probably in the same situation as Peacemaker, but chose the option not involving human torpedo. Both Peacemaker and the butterflies shared the similar belief system of killing any man, woman, or child to obtain peace. After turning down Goff's offer, Chris tells Leota that the butterflies were going to hurt her and the rest of their crew if he helped them. Chris and his brother bonded over rock music, and coincidentally that's how he bonded with his new friends, establishing that this crew is his new family. So Chris is finally able to make the choice to not pointlessly kill someone because of some authoritative figure telling him what to do, and using his need to establish peace belief system against him. Does Peacemaker not taking Goff's deal essentially end the world and send us on a path of destruction? Most likely. But the most important part of Peacemaker's decision is choice. He gave himself and everyone else a choice. I thought it was a nice parallel how Chris began the series reflecting on the last words Flag said to him right before, you know, he died. Peacemaker. What a joke. These words would begin to change Peacemaker, to where he decided to ask more questions, and he was unable to kill kids because he was beginning to no longer blindly follow orders. So Peacemaker went from covering up a corrupt government operation, to saving Leota's life, giving Leota the opportunity to reveal sensitive information to the public of the existence of Task Force X, and Waller's program of getting convicted criminals to go on dangerous missions in order to get time off their sentences. Leota announced 
announcing that she's Amanda Waller's daughter legitimizes all of her claims about the program and Project Butterfly, while reminding us that she is probably the one person who can leak this sensitive information without getting arrested or killed or worse. Because Amanda Waller would go nuclear on anyone else who did this. But it appears that Leota is safe. Because in the scene, immediately after this press conference, we see her safely return to her family. So most of you are probably asking yourself that super duper big question, are we going to get a Peacemaker Season 2? The short answer, yes. The medium-sized answer, yes, we are getting a Peacemaker Season 2. The long answer would be looking at James Gunn's tweet uh, regarding this very thing, where he wrote, that's right, hashtag Peacemaker with the Peacemaker helmet is coming back for Season 2. Thanks to Peter Safran, John John Cena, our incredible cast and crew, our wildly supportive and lovely friends at HBO Max, and mostly all of you for watching. And for those who don't know, James Gunn is the writer, director, producer, and creator of the show Peacemaker. And he also directed and wrote the most recent Suicide Squad. Which means I am incredibly disappointed that we didn't see a Weasel cameo in Peacemaker, since the post credit scene in Suicide Squad features Weasel wandering the earth. I appreciate that we got to see a legitimate Flash and Aquaman cameo, but I will say the Wonder Woman and Superman cameo reminded me of the Henry Cavill is clearly not standing here moment at the end of Shazam. I think the one big takeaway we can get from this season is that at one point in time, Aquaman definitely f***ed a fish. Aquaman is a fish f those are all my analytical thoughts about Peacemaker Season 1. I'm so glad this season quote-unquote rocked. Anyway, if you thought this video was adequate and you don't want to see the death of my channel, please subscribe. Please. But also, thanks for watching.